What's up guys? Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're going to talk about some uses of snaps that you might not have thought of in SketchUp. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so snaps I think is an underutilized feature right now. Um, it got rolled out in the 2023.1 version, I think. Um, but basically what it does is it allows you to add custom snap points to objects. So let's say, for example, we were to take a look at this stop sign right here. So right now, if I take this object, say I wanted to move it around and align it so that it lines up with certain points in the model. Well, at the moment, what we've got, right, is we've got a bounding box in here, but say I wanted to use the middle of this object. In order to do that, I would have to kind of inference off of the side like this, which is fine. I can do that, but that can get time consuming um, if you're doing it a whole bunch in your model. So. Um, in pretty much every case, I'm gonna wanna use the center of this stop sign. So what you can do is you can use snaps in order to add a custom snap point to this object. And I think this is the first thing people don't think about. We're gonna go ahead and double click into this object, by the way. This is the first thing people don't think about is ignoring any other use, just right clicking inside of this group. We're gonna double click in here and we're gonna right click and we're gonna click on add snaps. But remember that what snaps is gonna do is it's gonna allow me to add a custom snap point. So what I can do is I can move my mouse like this, I can click and then I can move my mouse in order to set the orientation, right? In this case, I'm just gonna click right here in order to set this and I'm gonna set my up orientation right here, that's gonna get more important in a second. But basically what that means is that, that means that now this object, in addition to having my normal points in here, has a custom snap point that I can use and it's going to automatically align the object to whatever face or object I mouse over, right? You can see how this alignment is going right here. It's like using the glue to function in your components, but you're not stuck with it just like gluing to everything because if I wanted to just move it, I can use just one of these regular points and it's not going to glue to anything. So where this might be helpful is say that we wanted to create a sign like this one. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some snap points to this one. Note how this is a component right here. I'm just gonna double click in here, right click and click on add snaps. And what I can do is I can go find the central point of all of these circles. All right, so we're gonna find the midpoint right here. We're gonna set this out. Notice how again, I can set that plus arrow in a direction. Um, we want that direction to be up, same as on our stop sign, because our stop sign will snap to this and it will snap the direction to the direction um, that we set over here. But what I can do is I can take this object. All right, and obviously this is probably overkill for a, um, for a sign, but it gives you kind of an idea of what you might do with this. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and set this one right here. We'll go ahead and set this one right here. And we're good to go. Well, now if I take this object and I make a bunch of copies of it, right? I'm gonna copy it up maybe like, I don't know, times 15 or 30 or 40, something like that. Um, but notice how every one of these has that snap point on here. Well, what that means, and we can go ahead and we can put this in a group. Whoops. What that means is now if I take this stop sign, I mouse over this point right here. So we're gonna select the sign, use the move tool. So we're gonna to tap M. Then I mouse over this. Notice how this is going to snap to any of those snaps that we've placed in here. And it's also going to set the orientation. So you can use this to make sure this is actually like centered on any of these points, just like this. So notice how I can adjust it so that it's giving me different directions, other things like that. So again, probably overkill for a stop sign, but it starts giving us an idea of some of the things we can do with this tool. So one of the things that I was thinking about is you could use this to set a snap point for like ADA heights for objects. So if I was to take this, give us a wall right here, we're gonna make it a group. So a lot of the time what you end up doing with something like this, right, is you use the move tool, you kind of find a midpoint and you like center it on the wall, 
And then once you center it on the wall, you're gonna move it up a certain height, that kind of thing. And that's definitely a valid way of doing this. However, in most cases, the top of this toilet seat, which doesn't even have a seat on it, and that's fine, I just downloaded it from the 3D warehouse. But in most cases, you're going to want to have the top of this being like 18 inches or whatever code is. Um, I'm not 100% sure what code is, but what you could do right, is you could go into this group and you could set a snap point that would be on the ground. So in this case, we might create a little guide using the tape measure tool right here, just to the top of our toilet. We're gonna tap the control key to make sure we're in create guide mode, but say this needs to be 18 inches off the floor. Well, what I can do is I can find a little point right here that aligns with the back of the toilet. Well, what I can do is I could set a snap right there. So I'm going to take this object, I'm going to right click in here, and we're going to add a snap. And we could set that snap so that it's aligned right here, like this. And then we can go ahead and we can get rid of that guide. But now you've got this snap point, and all you have to do in order to center this on a point on your wall or whatever, so you can just use the move tool, go find that snap point, and now you can snap this to the bottom of your wall right here, and it's always going to be at the proper height. So you can use this in order to set snaps that are off of your objects. And again, I mean, one of the cool things about this is let's say that our wall kind of continued, right? So we're gonna have a wall over here. I can take that object and it's going to orient this object to align to that face right here. So you could set up like literal libraries of your different appliances and things like that. Um, and then you could just bring them in and that's gonna be set up where you can snap to a certain point on the ground. So same kind of thing here. Um, so anytime you've got an object like this one, right, that's got either multiple holes on it or something like that, like this is pretty much always going to want to be aligned with this center point right here. Um, now you could have a situation where this is kind of rotated or whatever, but let's assume this will always align to a plate like this one. Well, what you could do is I'm gonna take this plate and we're just gonna call it base plate right here. And then our other object, we're just gonna call post, but if you were to come in here and find that middle point, so right click, add a snap. Right here, we're gonna set the snap, and we'll go ahead and we'll set the orientation. First off, we want our initial orientation to be up, but then we can set our rotation so this is gonna face in a certain direction, right? So we could set this like this. So we've created a snap right here, but then we could also create a snap on this object that does the same thing, so right click, add a snap. Now we're gonna do the same thing where we're gonna set that orientation facing here. But now we've got this object here that whenever we move it and we use this snap, it's going to snap. But notice how not only does it snap, it aligns. So if I click on this, and I still wish there was kind of a better visual indicator of the direction in here, but what it's gonna do is it's going to align the direction of that little plus from your snap with the direction of the little plus from the snap here. So this one, right, is aligned here. This one is aligned here. But no matter what, when I take these objects and I snap those two snaps together, notice how it's going to change the orientation of the object. So say I was to do a few of these, right? Every one of these, it's going to snap and align to that base plate based on the orientation that I set of the snap on the base object. Now, where this gets a little bit interesting too, and this is an idea I'm kind of playing around with, so I'm not 100% um, done with the idea, but say that you were trying to scatter some rocks or something like that. Right, so I'm just gonna set a surface right here. We'll go ahead and make it a group. So if you go in here and you set a number of different snaps in here, like this, right? So I've got all these different snaps and they're kind of aligned a little differently in every situation. But if you take those snaps, right, and you copy this object, so I'm just gonna use the move tool in copy mode. Notice how every time I take one of these snaps and I align it, with the ground, it's going to make that rock kind of align with the ground in a different way, 
right? So you can copy this and you can have a ton of different copies of the same thing all aligned in a different way, right? And you can kind of play around with the way this is set, but you can use this in order to create a little bit more randomization of your objects. And in some cases, right, you'll want to adjust this a little bit further, but by adding multiple different snaps, you could kind of randomize the placement of your copies just by using each one of those snaps as a base point. Next up, if you thought you were getting out of a snaps video without at least one piping example, you are dreaming. Um, but one of the things that you need to remember with these uh, snaps is that they have a direction associated with them. And this has been one of my complaints with snaps and it continues to be. Um, um, but if you click on a snap, right, it's going to show you kind of a color in here. So notice if I click on this one, I've got one color, but if I click on this one, it's different, right? And you can like, kind of see it. So it's light on this side and it's dark on this side, right? And this one is the opposite. So the dark side is facing out and the light side is facing in. And what that does is that affects the direction, right? The front face of that or the, the light face is going to be the direction that the object is going to snap. Well, let's say that we were to move this object based on this snap. Remember, this is the one that had the forward face facing inside. Well, if I snap over here, right to that other side, notice how that pipe kind of like snaps inside of the other pipe, which is not necessarily what we want. While this one, you're probably gonna have the same issue, actually. Yeah, see how it's the reverse, right? On this side, it's snapping to the front or forward face of this snap. And so all that means is that means that if you double click in here and you click on this and you don't like the direction these are going, you can just single click, right click and click on the option for reverse snap. Notice how when you reverse the snap, that means that the light face is now facing this way. Since these are components, that's been affected um, on both of these objects, right? It's changed on both of these objects. Well, now those snaps are going to snap you so that this is snapping to the face of the pipe in either direction. Now, remember that you can come in here, also right click and like reorient the snaps. In this case, I don't really need to do that because it's facing the right direction, but you can ch change the orientation of an existing snap. You can also use the eraser tool or just click on a snap and hit the delete key in order to remove it. Now, we've got one more cool feature, um, which uh, I think is actually really helpful. Okay, so what I've done is I've set this up with a base snap right here, and then each one of these weights has a snap like this as well, right? Well, if I use the move tool and I click and move this, like it'll work fine, but what happens is this can jump around a little bit, like trying to inference to other um, objects in here. Well, notice how down at the bottom, when you've clicked and selected a snap, there's an option to tap the Alt key to toggle tractor beam. So what tractor beam does is it finds any snaps or the closest snap to the object you have selected. So notice how right here, even though I'm moving my mouse way down here, if I click, it's going to snap this to that closest snap. So by toggling that tractor beam on, it's actually really fast to place these objects. So if I do the same thing here, tap all, notice how I can just move my mouse drop it right there, and it's really easy to move these objects. So you should be utilizing that tractor beam all the time, actually, because it's a huge, huge time saver um, for working with snaps. Like, notice how, like you don't have to mouse over anything, it just finds the nearest snap and you can just click. So definitely utilize that tractor beam function. Quite honestly, when I was starting to create this video, I forgot that this was a thing until the very end of the video and it makes life so much easier. So please use that tractor beam function um, because it's going to save you a ton of time working with snaps. All right, so I think there's some more interesting applications for snaps out there. I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. Are you using snaps? How are you using them? I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.